Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the exploratory data analysis phase in detail and we are going to be talking on what is the importance of an exploratory data analysis phase with an example. So the exploratory data analysis phase, also known as the EDA phase, is one of the most critical phases in any data analysis project. The exploratory data analysis phase helps you understand your data in more detail and uncover hidden insights and and different relationships between the different variables of your data. This helps you take business decisions that are that are driven by insights that, is, that you have got from, from your data. But to successfully perform an exploratory data analysis phase, there are some mandatory steps that we need to perform to have a meticulous understanding of your data. But before we dive right into it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest of data analytics across different technologies. I made a detailed videos on all of these topics as and they exist as individual videos on my uh, channel. You can take a look at that if you're interested in having a deep dive for each of these topics, but I'm going to cover the entire exploratory data analysis phase as a whole so that we get an understanding on this. So the exploratory data analysis phase consists of these seven key steps. So let's take a look at them one by one. So I identify variable types. This step helps you identify the different types of variables that are there in your data. So they are the main variable types are the categorical variable types, they can be nominal or ordinal, the numerical variable types, they can be discrete or continuous and the data variable types. Then we move on to the next steps where we perform descriptive statistics. This tells us the different characteristics of our data. It gives us the measures of central tendencies like mean, median and mode and also how spread our data is or the measures of dispersion which can be got by the variance and the standard deviation. Once we take a look at the descriptive statistics to understand the different variables, we then take a look at the distributions. So this tells us how our data is distributed across each variable. So you can get to understand the distributions and this helps you identify if your data is skewed or are there, are there, are there any biases or are there any outliers. You, you can understand different characteristics of your data. Then we move on to finding the missing values. So missing values are very important because we need to decide what to do with the missing values. How do we, how do we fill the missing values? You can either fill them with the average or the median, or you can derive more complex strategies where you can use machine learning algorithms to, to fill in the missing values. But whatever your strategy is, it has to be taken a look at very carefully because they can, if, if you uh, choose a wrong strategy, you may introduce bias in your data. Outliers. This helps you identify extremely large or extremely small values in your data. They may appear an anomalous. At times, these can be misrepresentation of your data or they can also indicate uh, critical conditions which need to be analyzed further. So outliers have to be taken a look at very closely. Then correlations. In this phase, we try to identify what are the relationships or associations of one variable type with the other. So for example, if there's an increase in a certain variable, does it increase or decrease another variable? So these are called as correlations. For, so for example, a strong positive correlation indicates that an increase in the values of one variable will, will also have an increase in, in the corresponding value of an, another variable. So the correlations generally lie between minus one to, uh, to plus one. Plus one indicates a strong positive correlation between two variables. Minus one indicates a strong negative correlation and zero indicates no correlation. One point to note here is that correlation does not imply causation. It just tells you that how two variables vary with each other. That if, if one variable increases, the, the other variable may also show an increase or may show a decrease. It doesn't imply that uh, that one variable causes uh, 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 the impact on the other variable. So that that is called causal or cause and effect. That is not depicted by correlation, but it correlations help you understand what could be the possible cause. Finally, finally we do multi-dimensional analysis, analysis where we analyze either a categorical variable with another categorical variable or a categorical variable with multiple numerical variables or multiple numerical variables with each other. Okay, so let's take a look at what we just discussed with the actual data set. So let us say we have some data. So in this case, we have around 30 rows of data and the different variables are the age, the gender, the region, uh, the annual income, monthly expenses, purchase amount, purchase date, okay, satisfaction level, and so on and so forth. Let, let us try to perform these 
steps with all these you know variables so i'm going to perform these steps with say around uh, from age to satisfaction le level and the other four variables i will leave it up to you to uh, you to perform and you can let me know the results in the comments below so let's take a look at this so age so what do you think age is so age appears to be a a numerical variable but it appears to be a discrete variable discrete variable means that in the range there can be only a finite amount of values gender appears to be a categorical variable with two categories male and uh, uh, female and, and no bi uh, binary so i would say rather three categories then region has uh, four categories again appears to be a be a categorical variable the annual income now this appears to be a numerical variable but it appears to be a continuous numerical variable that means between the range there can be infinite number of values monthly expenses again and purchase amount both appear to be numerical variables of the continuous type purchase date this is a date time variable and satisfaction level this on face value it looks to be a numerical variable but actually if you see this is actually a categorical variable but this is an ordinal categorical variable what does this mean it means that the order matters it matters that the satisfaction level of 5 definitely has more weightage or more importance than a satisfaction level of 2 it implies the customer is more is more satisfied once you have done this you can now move on to performing the descriptive statistics to understand your more data so let's take a look at this for one uh, variable let us create an analysis worksheet and let us do the descriptive statistics go to data click on data analysis and we can click on descriptive statistics okay I'm going to select this entire column, the annual income, and let us say the output range. I'm going to place it here. And let us select summary statistics. Okay. I will say labels in the first row and just check this. Okay. And I can see the summary statistics. Now, this tells us the, the measures of central tendencies and the measures of, of dispersion. So, the mean, or is also the arithmetic mean or the average. This is the the average salary is seventy one thousand four sixty four. There is a median. This is the middle point of a data is fifty eight thousand five hundred. So you can see the mean is more than the median. That means your data is slightly skewed to the right. Then you have a standard deviation. This tells us basically on average the data points vary from the mean by uh, an amount of thirty seven thousand seven hundred and twenty five. Okay. So uh, on average they are dispersed from the mean by thirty seven thousand seven hundred and twenty five. Then you have the variance again and then you have the range and the minimum and, and, and the maximum of the range and the total sum and the count. So you can understand a bit of your data from this but let us visualize your annual income to see if you can understand the distribution. So, the, so, the, so that is the next step. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to again select this entire column. I'm going to click on insert and let's go to the charts and select a nice box and whiskers plot. Okay. I'm going to copy this let's paste this here and here you can see okay let us remove the grid lines and give the data labels so you can see the median this is the point which splits your data the middle point of the data is 50,500 the, the, the mean is slightly more and you can see this has a long right tail just as we had assumed by seeing the descriptive statistics so the distribution helps you identify how your data is distributed if you want to get some more details you can also uh, click on uh, on the uh, let us see okay yeah let's double click this and let us try to show the inner points so now you can see right it shows there are some people getting high salary and because of this high salary values you can see that your mean is more than the median and your data is skewed to the right okay you can also from the box and whisker plot see the minimum value is 30,000 the maximum value is 150,000 and your interquartile range is uh, from 40,500 to 90,750. Okay, so it means 25% of the people are getting salary from 30,000 to below 45,500. 50% of the people are getting salary from 45,500 to 98,500. So this shows you how spread your data is. And only 25% of people are getting salary more than 90,750. And which is, which is actually skewing your data. So you can take a look at this in the data as well. You can confirm this. So let us go to the conditional formatting and select the highlight cell values greater than. Let us take a value 120,000. I've just seen some outliers and let us click on OK. So you can see these are the outliers. These are the people getting the higher salary. So they are like outliers in the data. They may be anomalous or they may be actually 
be getting higher salary because they are, they have a good job or they are really earning well depending on the kind of you know profession they are working in so you can study this but if i would have would have to fill in the missing values i can see these are the missing values here if i would have to fill in my be uh, best guess would be the median value in this case because you can see my data is, uh, is slightly skewed so in this case i would better go and fill the median value so 58500 it is 58500 so this makes your annual income variable ready for analysis okay now we will see is there any relationship so we have now done the uh, descriptive stat uh, uh, statistics we have done the distributions we have also done the outliers and the missing values now we'll see is there any relationship between the annual income and any other variables so let's say let us identify if there's a relationship between the annual income and the purchase amount so to, to see if the person's income tells us how much money he's going to spend so we're going to click on insert and i'm going to select the scatter plot i select that and let's copy this to the next page and you can clear, clearly see there's a clear uh, a linear relationship between the amount a person earns and the amount a person spends right so we can confirm this with a trend line and we can also give the r squared and the and the uh, equation on the chart so you can see in fact there's a clear linear relationship between the uh, between the annual income and the um, amount spread which can be modeled by this equation and r squared basically tells us that 92% of the variability in the purchase amount can be explained by the annual income. So this is actually a very good model and a strong linear relationship. So let us see if we can uncover further more insights. So now that we know that the person's purchase increases with the annual income, let us try and find do some analysis on the categorical variables. Let's see if our data is distributed equally across the regions. So I'm going to insert a pivot table here and I'm going to uh, put this in the existing worksheet. Let's click on the analysis worksheet, place the pivot table below. Click on OK and now let us take the region to the region. I'll add it in the value section and let's add a nice pie chart. Insert and click on the pie chart. And you can see this looks like that it is equally distributed. You can see all the regions. Let us do the data labels. The regions are equally distributed. So our data is good. It's not skewed for one specific region. And now let us see which region is producing the maximum annual income. So we because we know that the purchase amount is is directly correlated to the annual income so if you find the region that is that is uh, producing the most annual income we can safely say that the purchase amount from that region also will be the highest so we can target that region for maximum sales so let us try to uncover some insights again let us copy this okay and you can then um, uh, and then you can remove this and let us add the purchase amount oh, sorry the annual income annual income yeah and let us add another pie chart and see this and you can see let us add the data labels and you can see that the west region has the maximum annual income so likelihood uh, because there's a strong positive correlation between the uh, purchase and the annual income this region will be generating the most revenue so you can do targeted uh, uh, marketing campaigns in this region and boost your sales. So these are the kind of business decisions you can take and the insights you can uh, uncover by doing your exploratory data analysis. I made detailed videos on each and every topic. You can take a look of, of that on the channel. And if you want me to make some more videos or or some uh, or explain some other topics in detail, do leave a comment and like on the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.